Hi everyone, uh, my name is Emmanuel Obodo. I'm a specialist biomedical scientist and I'm also a lecturer in biomedical science here in the UK. I completed my PhD in biomedical science. I have extensive experience working in the NHS as a specialist biomedical scientist. And for many years, I have helped a number of people secure their dream job as a specialist biomedical scientist and also as a biomedical scientist. I'm here to help you to navigate through interview questions and thereby increase your chances of getting a job as a biomedical scientist. I ask that you like, share, comment and subscribe our page. Thank you. Today we are going to be looking at blood film morphology, okay? And I'm going to be sharing some tips that will help you to understand how to not just identify the cells, but also understand the conditions. So I want you to pay attention to the tips that I'll be sharing. Once again, my name is Dr. Emmanuel Obodo. I've been working in NHS hospital as a specialty biomedical scientist, and I'm also a lecturer here in the United Kingdom. First of all, I would like us to look at blood cell differentiation. Remember that the hematology of full blood can measure blood cells, okay? What are the blood cells, red cells, white cells, and platelets? Then under the white cells, you have subtypes, which are neutrophils, basophils, eosinophils, monocytes, and lymphocytes, okay? So now let's look at their differentiation. So what I'm sharing here, these are stem cells. And you can see that this is a stem cell, okay? Now, this is also a stem cell. So what I want you to understand that under the stem cells, you have two, they divide into two, which are myeloid and lymphoid stem cells. Under the lymphoid, you will get lymphocyte. But before you get to the lymphocyte, you can, before the lymphocyte, you can get a lymphoblast, prolymphocyte, then lymphocyte, mature lymphocyte. Then under the myeloid, you cannot produce, the, the, the cells will differentiate into other parts of the blood cells, whether it's red cells, monocytes, docinophils, basophils, platelets, and so on. So from the myeloid, they cannot differentiate all through into these mature cells you are seeing here. Now I want you to pay attention to this place that I marked red. I'm saying that anything from here, they don't supposed to be seen in the blood. No, this should not be in the blood, okay? This can be in the bone marrow during the cell differentiation, but should not be in the blood. So what we expect to be in the blood are these ones, okay? So these ones are the ones expected to be in the blood. So if for any reason you see any of this, it indicates abnormalities. And these are some of the things we are going to be sharing. So let me now start off by saying that these are some of the examples of the blood, red blood cells, not white cells. These are red blood cells identification. So you can see all of them like this is acanthocytes. So this agglutination when the red cells agglutinate or rule out formation when they form a kind of streps, a line, okay? They have baso basophilic stippling, tear drop, okay? There, these few things, we are going to look at it in detail. But what I will say that, Please, you familiarize yourself with the names of each of these cells because you are going to need it as you progress along, okay? First, this is normal cells, okay? Normal blood cells. So you can see these are normal red blood cells. These are the platelets. This small, small dot there are the platelets. Monocytes, okay? Neutrophils and lymphocytes. So these are normal blood cells. Now, can I mention that when they give you blood frame to comment on when you go for your interview, it's very, very vital that you comment the three cells. Comment on the red cells, red blood cells, comment on the white blood cells, and also comment on the platelet. Very, very important. So don't get distracted with looking at, it doesn't matter how the red cells look, or white cells look, or platelet look. Please remember, you need to comment on the three cells. Okay. Now, let me give you tips. So everything that I'm going to be sharing on this video, okay, who I kind of summarize them here. When you go for your interview and they present you blood film to look at, it cannot be more than any of this. It, most likely, it's, go, it's going to be this. So what are the tips? Number one, they are likely to present you blood film on anemia. One of the things I want you to remember when it comes to anemia, that you have microcytic anemia, normocytic anemia, and macrocytic anemia. Good. 
Now, when it has to do with microcytosis, meaning that the red cells are small in size, it always go in line with hypochromia. Hypochromia, chromia means tense or color, okay? Hypo means less tense, okay? Hypo, less tense. So when the red cells are not properly stained, okay, it's called hypochromia. Then you have target cells. So these things, when you see them in the blood film, is likely it's going to be iron deficiency anemia. If it is not iron deficiency anemia, it's going to be thalassemia, possibly beta thalassemia. Note that. Another type you're going to see is where the red blood cells are bigger in size, which is called macrocytosis. There's a lot of red cells bigger in size. It always go in line with polychromatia, nucleated red blood cells. When you see that, I want you to start thinking it might be megaloblastic anemia, which can be due to vitamin B12 or folate deficiency of both of them. If not, it may be no megaloblastic anemia which could be due to chronic diseases such as liver or kidney diseases, okay? Now, another thing you are going to get in terms of anemia is where you are looking at things like normocytic anemia, okay? So under that normocytic anemia, there's a number of things that can cause it, but most times in the lab, they are likely to focus their question on this. Where you're going to see like spherocytes, okay? You're going to see schistocytes. Schistocytes are fragmented red blood cells, okay? Once you see that, start thinking about hemolytic anemia. So that person is hemolyzing. And that hemolysis most times can be due to antibodies. Okay? We'll look at this in detail as we progress. Now, another thing you are going to see, they are likely to provide for you is in terms of ITP, which is immune thrombocytopenia, or TTP, which is thrombocytopenic pupra. Okay? Now, most times, this is associated with when you see something like acanthocyte a chinocyte, schistocytes, okay, thrombocytopenia, and spherocytes. These spherocytes, again, when it comes to ITP, may not necessarily be present. I want you to take note of this. Another likely question they will also produce for you or give you is in terms of post splenectomy. So when somebody's spleen has been removed, you are likely to see a high number of acanthocytes, Hauer jolly bodies, okay? So once you see that, tell them, post splenectomy. Another thing they are likely to show you will be leukemia, whether it is AML or ALL. When it is acute, which is acute myeloid leukemia or acute lymphocytic leukemia, you are looking at blood cells will be greater than 20%. There are going to be a lot of blood cells and you're going, there will be something like thrombocytopenia. However, when it is chronic, whether myeloid or lymphocytic leukemia, you are going to see less than 20% blast last okay and there's going to be increased raised number of total white cell count take note of that another thing that they would like you to show you is in terms of malaria parasite i would say for your interview maybe you may not need to necessarily bother about the species but just know when there is malaria parasite or when there's no malaria parasite sometimes they may also show you something like microfilaria okay again you may not need to bother so much about the uh, species but at least if you can have it, if you can try, that would be great. However, if you don't, do your best to identify that this is microfilaria or this is malaria. Okay. So these are overall tips. Let us get into the main gist today, okay? Now, I'm going to start off again by trying to tell you because the first slide, the first, you know, slides I'll be showing will be anemia. So I want to start off by telling you that in anemias, you classify with MCV like I've told you guys before on my MCV videos, okay? So you have, when the MCV is low, these are the conditions you are likely to see. So memorize that, okay? When MCV is normal and the hemoglobin is low, these are the kind of things you are likely to see. So you memorize it. Then when it is raised, these are the kind of conditions you are likely to see. Again, memorize it, okay? I just thought I should put it there for you. So look at this. <laughs> when you see this slide, what do you think? You are going to see there's a lot of cells here. First of all, there are different shapes. Look at the sh size of this. Look at the size of this. So the, the size is varies. Okay, that's number one. Number two, if you look at the center pallor of the red cells, they are not properly stained. Okay, that's also another thing. Okay, now if you also look at, there are different sizes. Some of them are small, some of them are big, some of them are medium. So there are different sizes of red cells here. So this is a typical example, like 
microcytic anemia. So here there's a lot of microcytosis, meaning the red cells are smaller size. And because of this less tense at the center pallors of the red cells, it's called hypochromia, okay? And when it is different sizes, okay, you call it amisocytosis, okay? And when it is different shapes, you call it poikilocytosis. So if you look at this very blood film, you're going to see this is a typical example of microcytic anemia, okay, which could be due to iron deficiency. If it is not due to iron deficiency, it could be due to thalassemia, such as beta thalassemia, or lead poisoning, or it could be chronic diseases. Now, if you not think it might be any of this, I'm going to focus mainly on iron deficiency and maybe other conditions like thalassemia. Now, if you think it's iron deficiency, which is a common cause for this, what are you supposed to do? So what you do as a BMS, if they present this to you, tell them that this could be due to iron deficiency and what you are going to do is that you are going to, there will be a need to do a differential test. So you have to do serum ferritin, serum iron, total iron binding capacity and transferrin saturation. The common thing they may, you might they may measure in the lab is the first three. So you are going to see that ferritin, if it is iron deficiency, will be low. If it is iron deficiency, serum iron will be low total iron binding capacity will not be low okay to be raised so that's what happened so always comment on something like that as a, a test to confirm that then you let them know that if you do that and the serum ferritin is normal iron ferritin uh, serum iron is normal that means it's not iron deficiency it could be due to other conditions such as thalassemia okay now let's look at this other one. So this one, you can see there's a lot of cells here. I'm going to just point this. So if you look at this, this, so they are big. So most of the cells here are big in size, okay? Because they are big in size, they're looking at macrocytic anemia because they are big in size. Macrocytic anemia, okay? So this macro macrocytic anemia could be due to megaloblastic or non-megaloblastic anemia. Another thing that is associated to help you to understand this condition, once you see macrocytic anemia, there's going to be what we call hypersegmented neutrophils, meaning that the neutrophils is more, it has many lobos, okay? So again, you might see something like basophilic stippling, although it's not on this blood film, okay? So that's also another indication of macrocytic anemia. Now, in terms of macrocytic anemia, megaloblastic anemia talks about vitamin B12 or folate deficiency. If not, there are no megaloblastic then talk about other conditions like liver diseases or kidney disease. Okay. Now, when you suspect megaloblastic anemia, it's worth looking into maybe serum folate, serum vitamin B12. If they are deficient, if they, if they are low, it confirms that this is megaloblastic anemia. However, if they are normal, you might need to consider something like non-megaloblastic anemia. Then you can look at a serum LFT or serum kidney function test as the case may be. Okay? So these are some details you need to give to them. So don't just say, you know, macrocytic anemia and all that. So give them this detail to also uh, show that you know what the result indicates and you know the necessary step to take to confirm that. Now let's look at this one. So if you look at this one, you are going to see there's a lot of spherocytes here. So when you see these small, small red blood cells that are hyperstand, okay, they are called spherocytes. Spherocyte is one of the strongest indications of hemolytic anemia. That means there is hemolysis. Another thing that you can see there is in terms of hereditary spherocytosis, okay? Then another reason that this that can result to this is post-transfusion, okay? That is very, very important. Now, possible tests for differential diagnosis. If there are hemolytic anemia, if it is hemolytic anemia, it means that the red blood cells are being destroyed. Now, once the red cells are being destroyed, there will be a release of lactate dehydrogenase. So, meaning that lactate dehydrogenase will be high during hemolytic anemia. And if there is hemolysis, the bone marrow will be under pressure to compensate the amount of the blood that is being destroyed. And because of that stress, the bone marrow will be pushing a lot of immature red cells in the, in, the, in the system. So that will mean that reticulocyte count will be high. So when you see reticulocytosis is also an indication of hemolysis. Now, another thing is that once there is hemolysis, which is the destruction of the red blood cells, 
the hemoglobin will be broken into globin and hem. Under the hem, that is where you get the ions. So the ions can be reabsorbed, okay, to the system that is fine, stored as ferritin, as the case may be. But when it comes to the globin, you are looking at it will now break down to amino acid, okay, and maybe like bilirubin, as the case may be, okay. So what I'm trying to say is that bilirubin then will be high, okay, in terms of hemolytic anemia. But if there is increased hemolytic anemia, you will find out that most of that uh, hemoglobin may not be broken down. Some of them will be floating in the system. And once they are floating in the system, the body has a solution for it. So there's what we call haptoglobin. This haptoglobin will bind the free hemoglobin floating in the system due to that too much hemolysis. Okay? What that means then is that if there is hemolysis, haptoglobin will be low. Okay? So these are some things you need to know. So if haptoglobin is normal, it doesn't, that means there is no much hemolysis. But if it is low, it's a strong indication of severe hemolysis. Okay? Now, let's look at this one. So, this one, obviously on slide 4, you'll see that there's a lot of agglutination going on here. Okay? I purposely put this together with this. So, this one is a real loss formation. Okay? But you're going to see there's a lot of agglutination going on here. Don't forget what I told you about race MCSC. When I was talking about um, maybe like autoimmune disease. The same thing is applicable. So this is a kind of typical theme that you can see in terms of race MCHC if it is called agglutinin. So this agglutination can be due to autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Okay. So meaning that there is a kind of antibody attacking the cells. Somebody's antibody attacking its own cell. That can lead to this very agglutination okay and of course that will lead to anemia okay so it involves with antibodies and this can be a typical example when antibodies bind on the red cells okay and when it binds on the red cells it start destroying the red blood cell so of course code agglutinin then when you look at root loss formation which is this very like a kind of streptococcus something like that you know they're in, in chains okay so this is, is common with uh, normocytic anemia uh, immunoglobin, you know, being low, inflammatory diseases and infection, okay? Now, let's look at this other one. This is also another typical example the question they ask about ITP and TTP DS. I've already mentioned this to you. Remember what I, I told you at the beginning. Once you see fragmented red cells, which we call schistocytes, okay, and you see some spherocytes, like you can see some spherocytes here. This is, this is a spherocyte. And of course, this is polychromatia. So when you see spherocyte and you see schistocyte, start thinking about hemolytic anemia. And of course, that can also be associated with ITP and TTP. So once you see this, okay, and you can see in this blood film, there is hardly no, uh, no, basically there's a thrombocytopenia here. But, so once there is a low platelet count and you are seeing schistocyte and you are seeing spherocyte, you might start thinking in terms of ITP or TTP. Like I've mentioned, okay, and this is very, very important, especially ITP is a serious one, so it's very, very important. Most times they are likely to present their questions on ITP, okay. So, the secret again schistocyte, spherocyte, okay, start thinking about hemolysis and also start thinking about ITP. Now, look at this other one. So, this one you are looking at, there's a lot of elliptocytosis, that means elliptocytes, so this kind of Shape, should I say pencil shaped cell that you are seeing here? They are called elliptocytes. Okay, this is called hereditary ellip elliptocytosis because there is a high number of it here. Okay, and this can be commonly seen in thalassemia and iron deficiency anemia. Then let's look at this other one. Okay, one of the reasons why I put this here, you can see I put something, I put target cells. So these are target cells, I put target cells here. I also put acanthocytes, so these cells are called acanthocytes, okay? I put it because on this film, there was high, there, this is Howard jelly bodies. So this dot you are seeing inside the red cell is called Howard jelly bodies. So once you see Howard jelly body, you see acanthocytes and you see target cells, sometimes even tear drops, okay? You might start looking at what we call post splenectomy. Please don't forget it, very important. Post splenectomy, the blood film feature is acanthocytes. Uh, target cells, Howard jelly body. The giveaway is Howard jelly bodies. Now you look at this very 
teardrops. I, try, I sh thought I should show you a typical example of teardrops. So this is a teardrop cells. And these teardrop cells, okay, can be seen in anemia, which is due to, which can be due to the bone marrow, or maybe there could be toxin or cancer, iron deficiency, or maybe the blood producing, you know, abnormal blood cells. Okay. Then you see this one is called stomatocytes. Okay, this tomato, you know, when you see the rest, you can see this middle line. Once you see that middle line, that we call stomatocytes, and it's common in acute alcoholism. Okay. And then you look at this one. This is also a typical example of what I've repeated, what I've said before. But what I really want to show you here is nucleated red blood cells. Okay. Once you see a significant amount of nucleated red blood cells, that means that the bone marrow is under stress. It shouldn't happen. Although this can be common when it comes to a newborn baby, you can see a lot of um, nucleated red blood cells. But when you see something like this, so you can see that there's a, there's macrocytes, there's polychromatia, nucleated red cells. So this can be a typical example of maybe some, in fact, there are also spherocytes here, so you cannot rule out maybe hemolysis or maybe macrocytic anemia, okay? Then you look at this one, this one of course is obvious, okay? Where you see there's a sickly cells, okay? So this is a sickle cell anemia, so once you see this, mention to them that this is a sickle cell anemia, okay? There's a, there are some cells here like this, okay, this, okay, which are called crystal form of red blood cells, okay? But anyway, this is a typical example of um, sickle cell anemia okay or sickle cell disease now another thing i thought i should show you is the malaria so once you see this of course this is a lot of malaria here and they are all ring form okay so another thing you might need to look at look at different species different phases or stages of malaria parasite study them that will also help you but it most likely they may give you ring form you know of malaria then just tell them that this is a ring form and tell them that if it is passiparum or nolesi that you are going to do parasitemia, meaning that you are going to quantify the amount of the uh, parasite in the blood in the red blood cells. Okay, remember this red blood cell, this parasite, you don't see them outside the red cells. You see them on the red blood cells. Although there are some type of stains, okay, they will use that will lie the red blood cell to expose the parasite only. But I want you to know that this disease attack the red cells. Once you don't see it, once the, you can see red blood cells and you are seeing something that is outside the red cell, please don't mistake it for malaria parasite. Now, another question they may ask in terms of microfilaria, okay? So in that microfilaria, you are looking at different species, but don't worry about it. Once you see something like this, tell them microfilaria, even if you are not able to identify the species, I don't think they will really penalize you for it. Now, let's look at this other one. So this one, this is also a common question where there's a bunch of platelets coming together. So once you see this bunch of platelets coming together, it's called platelet clump. Okay, it's called platelet clump. And in platelet clump, once somebody is having platelet clump, okay, one of the things we'll do is to ask them to repeat a full blood count and collect sample on EDTA and citrated anticoagulant bottle. Okay, so we do it that. So because with that citrate, it kind of prevent the platelet clumping. Okay. Here you see this is a platelet clump, okay, and here you can see there's a lot of, a lot of platelets here because of there's a lot of platelets here. This is called thrombocytosis, and even a lot of these platelets, some of them are small, some of them are big inside, is called platelet anisocytosis. Remember, I said anisocytosis talks about different sizes. Then you can have what we call this is not common question, but you can get it. It called platelet satellitism, a platelet satellitism, and this is common in immuno immunologic and antibodies, you know, kind of disease. Okay, so what this means basically is that the, the platelet will kind of surround the neutrophils. That's just what it means. Okay, and now the big one that they are likely to ask you leukemia. So when it comes to the leukemia, one of the things I want you to remember, like I mentioned, if it is chronic, there's going to be high amount of total white cell count. So once you see a lot of, you can see there's a lot of cells here. Some of them are mature. So you can see neutrophils here that are mature. So once you can see some mature cells and you see some immature cells like myeloblast, promyelocyte, myelocyte, metamyelocyte, start thinking about chronic. But because you have seen some neutrophils, that means it's from the myeloid. You call it chronic myeloid leukemia okay so i've given you some condition here leukocytosis neutrophilia monocytosis and all that but at last here but even if you do see blood it's going to be very very low maybe in some cases less than five percent but definitely less than twenty percent 
and there are some tests that you might need to do okay to confirm this remember cell marker cell marker is one of the strong additional tests you do to confirm the type of leukemia so you can do fish and you can do lab okay and you can do immunophenotype as well to look at their cd expression these are some tests that you can do to confirm you know the particular uh, um, condition the particular leukemia whether it's cml or, or something else okay but on this occasion it's definitely cml now you look at this this is also similar with what i just showed you this one is chronic lymphocytic leukemia which is cll so you can see again there's a lot of cells here and there are and there, and there are mature lymphocytes here because of there are a lot of mature lymphocytes and there are a lot of cells think about chronic lymphocytic leukemia again the same thing but a giveaway here is what we call smell cells okay once you see a smell cells like this okay so it's a giveaway and of course you do both a, a immunophenotyping to confirm it so with cll they are common to express cd5 and cd20 now this one is mainly common in acute leukemia whether it's acute lymphocytic leukemia ALL or acute myeloid leukemia so why because there's a lot of blast and you can see it's about greater than 20 percent blast okay so once you see something like that you would start thinking about acute but one of the things i would like you to pay attention to is this why can you differentiate whether it is ALL or AML okay you differentiate with what we call our rod which is this thing I've circled. So at the cytoplasm, you see our rod. Okay, that line, that thread line that's in there is our rod, and it is common in AML. So this is how you can be able to differentiate this, you know, all this. So I don't know if you have got any question. You can put your question, you know, put your question on the comment section. Okay. What I can tell you that please try and go through what I've said, especially that first slide where I kind of recapped everything what you should expect before you start going through it and once you master these things that i've mentioned you will be fine when they present any blood pain thank you very much for listening please i want you to continue to subscribe like share let me know how this video has been helping you and thank you so much for those of you who have been contacting me and also putting comments i really appreciate i really appreciate it thank you so much and i come back your way